With us being in the, the duck and goose uh, game call market and being very active in the waterfowl industry and, and waterfowl hunting, I don't set up much for any early whitetail hunts, and, and Steve does. Uh, but I do set up for late season uh, whitetail and muzzleloader in particular. And Steve knew that, and so we kind of put a game plan together where we could attack it together. Uh, the plan was to go down, and, and hopefully the opportunity would present itself for me to harvest a nice uh, whitetail here. And if so, then Steve would also go after one. So that was our plan of attack. All right, so I got my new Vortex scope on my muzzleloader. It's November 22nd, but I'm going to make sure... I just got the scope put on. I've got to try and see where it's shooting. I'm going to shoot at 50 yards and then I'm going to zero this Vortex scope in for a late season muzzleloader. Fire in the hole. Right there, last shot. Dead on at 100. We're ready to rock with the Vortex. Chris has got a late season muzzleloader tag, as I do as well. Uh, but I'm going to film Chris first. Hopefully he'll get a big one down and if he does, and maybe I'll get to get in the barrel, but we're worried about getting Chris a big buck. He hasn't killed one yet this year. Nope, not yet. Well, we'll hopefully change that. He's all set up. He's got the redneck blinds up and on food plots, and yes, we're going to go get in the blind. We've got some beans out front of us. we got corn behind us. And we got some more beans to the north, about 250 yards. It's about 45, 50 degrees today with a good cold front coming over the next two days. So we're going to give it a shot here out of the redneck blind for uh, today and maybe tomorrow. See what we see. We've been seeing a lot of does coming out to eat and uh, been some late bucks coming in. So we'll give it a shot and see what we got coming in. Well, the first deer of the evening have decided to show up. Uh, we got about three does to the north of us and one small buck, but they're starting to come out to the beans already, so now it's just a waiting game. Okay, now we've got three bucks on the field. Oh, they're all out in the beans. They're still about 250. Two good shooter bucks. One smaller young young buck, but we're gonna see if they'll work a little closer and then we may give them a poke here. It's about four, 20 after four or something like that, so we got a little time to wait and see. Well, welcome back to Buckman TV. Well, last night I filmed Chris Betts we couldn't get a shot at two different shooters that came out in the beans. Uh, the blind was just too far from the food source. So, game plan today, it's mid-morning right now. We are going to get a, a blind that Chris has got up on wheels on a trailer. We're gonna move that blind closer to the food source so we got a good spot and a better shot at those bucks tonight. Now we got the blind closer to this bean patch where these shooters were coming out. We're gonna brush it in and get out of here. So we've been getting a lot of different trail cam pictures, several young bucks and some good mature bucks too. We've got a nice 12 pointer we've been watching, uh, probably a three and a half, four year old. would like to let him go one more year. Uh, I've got a couple other uh, good 10 pointers. We've probably got between eight and 10 that are, are ready to harvest. So we're just hoping that they'll come to the food plots. We took all the pressure away from it last night and didn't hunt. Just kind of let it rest, last it from the road. There was some deer back out here in the beans, so that's a good sign. Overnight, the temperatures dropped about 15 to 20 degrees. Uh, we're in the low teens uh, to single digits by the time we leave tonight. Good northwest wind. Uh, got in here in good time, about one o'clock. Steve has to be back at the firehouse tomorrow. 
Um, if we don't get something tonight, we may pick it back up uh, last three or four days of the season. So we're kind of hoping to get it done tonight, but stay tuned and we'll see what happens. First deer of the evening just came out of the field. It's about 3.30, 3.45. Temperatures are still dropping. Probably about 10 degrees out now. Looks like she's all by herself for right now, but we'll see what comes out with her. Well, with those bucks feeding in the beans, uh, they were in no hurry to go anywhere. And unfortunately, we were losing camera light. And Chris wanted to shoot that big shooter buck more than anything in the world. However, he didn't feel comfortable taking that far a shot. And as they inched their way closer to the blind, the camera light was fading. But we knew I had three or four days at the end of the muzzleloader season in January to get back with Chris and try and get the job done. So we elected to just not take the shot that night and come back in January. So we've got one deer in particular that uh, we feel like is going downhill. Um, he's a nice deer. He's got stickers everywhere. And we got one really good trail cam picture of him. So he's definitely right at the top of the hit list and probably the one I'm going to go after. It's a lot colder. It's roughly negative five degrees, wind chill up to negative 20, 25. Um, we're out here about one o'clock again. Uh, there was actually a few deer on the beans when we came in, so we're gonna sit and wait and see what comes back out. Steve actually is over hunting on another, another place west of here, so we'll see uh, if the deer are moving like we think they will be with it being this cold. About about 100 yards to the dead center of the beans, uh, about 85, 90 yards over here where we're hoping they'll come out. And the far, far corner of the beans is 182. Anything that comes out should be in range. Time will tell. We've got our first deer of the evening on the field. Four of them have came out, one decent buck. Not the one we're looking for yet, they're about 140 yards. Maybe a three-year-old, but I'm guessing a two-year-old. Wow, he's a pig right there. Third deer in. That's the shooter. Broadside right now. Tall 10.
night, you hopefully put the smack down on a good buck. Yep. Your scope broke when you shot. Correct. But that doesn't mean it was broke before your shot. It was like the gun kind of went off funny. Yes. Sounded funny. Uh, we're going to go look. We're going to do our due diligence and go look and see if you hit them. Well, we're not seeing any any blood or any hair out in the field. Tons of deer sign, but no blood. So we're inside the timber now taking a look just to make sure. But looks like it was a clean miss, whether it was a bad shot or a gun malfunction or something didn't feel right. So we'll go back at it tonight and see if we get another shot. When we shot last night, I think I had the the scope out the window of the blind and I knew something didn't feel right because there was just no recoil. Well, it looks like this must have been on the outside of the window and when the gun kicked, the window caught the recoil and caught this uh, adjustment knob and broke it off. So that explains a lot, but it puts us back to the drawing board. So now we're taking a scope off of uh, another gun and we're gonna try to get it put on the muzzle loader and get it all dialed in. So hopefully that helps, we'll find out. We changed out the scopes and we're at 50 yards and we're going to see if we can't get it dialed in and try it all over again here. Booyah! All right. Ah, that is where you want it. Yep. You're about maybe two inches high at 100. Yep. Means you're probably going to be dead on it. 150. Yep. You're good. You're sighted in. It took a while and... Yep. Yep. And took a new scope. Took a new scope. <laughs> But we're good. We ended up getting excited into where we thought we were comfortable and we went back out. Well guys, we're back one more night. Gonna be our last night. We've got two more nights of Muzzy, uh, but we can't go tomorrow night. So we're back on the North Beans where we'd seen the seven bucks and several does two nights ago. Uh, the wind has switched back out of the north. so this. This blind's uh, more favorable for us. Steve's hunting down there about 300 yards to the south of us, and we'll see whether they decide to come out on our end or his. Time will tell. Well, we've got our first deer on the plot tonight. Looks like there's five does down there right now. We just had three bucks circling behind us in the timber. Nothing we could get a shot at, but they might be working at the south plot down there for Steve. So we're getting some action. Hopefully it's uh, not too little too late. Hopefully they can keep coming out before dark. Well, from 300 yards out, all I heard was a shot, and I saw the whole herd clear. You know, so I told Kyle, well, we only got, a, you know, 30 minutes left, and I had to go home that night, had to work at the firehouse the next day. So lo and behold, out steps Mama Doe, right in front of the redneck blind. Time to fill the tag. Did I get her? disappeared no cedars but I think I just got a doe 
last couple minutes of late season muzzleloader, so I fill my dough tag. Got sausage for the freezer. I know this is Buckman, but you gotta shoot the does too, quality deer management. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get to hunt anymore, so may as well put the dough in the freezer. Cool deal. Chris, I really appreciate you letting us on here. Yeah. And, uh, I, I hope you get your big buck. I know you missed one tonight, unfortunately. Yep. And he was huge. Yeah, he was a good deer. And uh, but this late season has been great, and and uh, you've seen firsthand with the buck that you shot at the other night, and then la and then tonight, uh, what late season, what this the power of these food plots right. can do when you draw these white tails in. You bet. And uh, it's cool. You had this farm set up perfect for late season. Thank you. And a lot of work. Congratulations, yes, sir. awesome job. Maybe we don't have the bone on the ground, but we had a good time. So on the last night, Steve actually had to go home. And so we had no one to film. I went back out, I actually took my father with me. It was the first time he had hunted all year or, or even accompanied me and uh, guess who stepped back out. He had been grazed the night before. He'd ran off into the sunset. I didn't think I'd ever see him again. I actually went to a different food plot tonight and he came out to this food plot. And we were able to make a clean kill, good shot. He didn't go maybe 30 yards, so it all worked out. It's the very last night of muzzleloader season, probably about the last 20 minutes of the season. Seen several deer, and right here, uh, two, two shooters come out. He was kind of cornering at me and got the shot. Uh, unfortunately, Steve had to leave a little early yesterday and get back, so. Uh, actually, they left first thing this morning, and uh, so he wasn't here to get the deer on film. So we apologize, but it's been one heck of a crazy hunt. I'm here with my dad, and uh, 70 yard shot. Yeah, probably about 170 yards. And dad watched him crash right here at the edge of the timber, and we just pulled up on the ranger. So we're gonna walk over, and uh, I can see him from here. I haven't been over there yet. That just shows the power of real world wildlife beans. They're shatterproof and they yield much higher than any other bean on the market. So that food was still there in January, late season for those deer to come to. So powerful that that buck, even though he was wounded the night before, came back out to feed on those beans before dark and Chris was able to get the job done. What a phenomenal story on a great whitetail in Southern Iowa.